Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range, just take a break, have some fun, do a little bit of shooting. It's gonna be a very informal video, but I think as time goes on, our videos get to be more and more informal. And that's because I just really like to go shooting and bring you guys along. I wouldn't call myself a reviewer. It's kind of funny, a lot of folks say, oh, I love the review Mac, and I don't really see what I do as reviews. I'm just shooting guns I enjoy, and I'm bringing you guys along and kind of sharing thoughts as if you were my shooting buddy standing next to me on the line, just talking about the new gun we picked up. The new gun that I recently got my hands on came into Copper Custom, and this is the CZ Shadow 2. I'll go ahead and open the box for you guys. This beauty came in, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot imagine life without it. I absolutely have to shoot it. So I grabbed it, brought it out to the range today, and that's what we're going to do is a little bit of shooting with this handgun. It's kind of interesting. Now, I, I, I can't really say recently, but in, in very not that long ago, I was able to go to the Czech Republic. I was the guest of CZ USA. I went with Guns and Ammo and a few other gun writers, and uh, I got to see these being manufactured. And it was really interesting to see because in, in your mind's eye, you think of CZ as being this ginormous con uh, company that you know spans states in size because of all the handguns and rifles and stuff that they're known for. And it's really interesting to see just how modest CZ is. And, and, and it's, it's not that it's a small manufacturing facility, it's of modest size, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on there that is really interesting to see from the forging of the frames that takes place right there on site to the hand fitting of all the parts that takes place right there on site to the testing that takes place of every single handgun right there on site the level of detail that goes into manufacturing and the hands-on that goes into the manufacturing of these CZ pistols is really much more than I had expected because I've toured other factories where everything is automated except for the final assembly. These things are built with loving care and everybody I saw at CZ really loved their jobs. They had CZ shirts on. Uh, it, it's just an incredible culture. It was really fun. It was very eye-opening and it endeared me even more to my choice of handguns that not only do I carry for self-defense, but I've been shooting for many decades as just a shooter. So let's talk about this Shadow 2. Now I had the opportunity to see this pistol again in the Czech Republic before it was announced here on the US market. And, um, and we shot it on the range and every single one of us that shot it was just blown away. Now the Shadow, if you've ever shot that, the predecessor to this one, was a very good gun in its own right but they've really taken it another step with the Shadow 2. The ergonomics, the trigger, the sights, everything about this handgun just screams competition, which isn't surprising because in Europe, these handguns actually dominate in the competitive circuits. And, um, and in terms of just being a CZ shooter myself and, and somebody that appreciates a fine handgun, uh, the Shadow is probably the pinnacle of, of the CZ-75 design. So this is based on the CZ-75 design. It has the um, you know all metal frame and slide and all that good stuff with a, an inverted slide rail. So the slide rides inside the frame versus outside on more uh, conventional pistols. So it, it's very much a highly modified CZ-75. It has target sights, which uh, are adjustable for uh, windage and elevation. You have controls on the gun. Now this one I've set up for competition. It, it ships with this safety, this low smooth safety over here on the left side of the pistol as well. I've gone ahead and taken that off and put the competition style safety on, which is much bigger. And uh, that gives me a little bit more comfort when I'm shooting this thing because I'm an old 1911 shooter. It's kind of nice to rest your thumb on that and it keeps you away from the slide stop so you're not going to ride that slide stop. But um, it does kind of make it hard to get to the slide stop. I'd like to see an extended slide stop as well. But uh, yeah, and then you have these aluminum grips which feel really, really good. You have this extended mag release. The gun is just perfectly fit. Everything about it just screams quality. And yeah, and the trigger is absolutely amazing. So the gun does come with what you need to swap out this safety. I did film me doing that. It's a relatively simple process to do. There are tutorials online to show you how to do it. It's not all that hard or you can just read your manual. It comes with tools. It comes with extra buffers, with uh, the recoil guide buffers, and it comes with three magazines. Today, we're just gonna be doing some shooting with some browning ammunition. I had this stuff sitting in my garage for quite some time, came across it, thought, well, let's go out and do some shooting with it. It's 115 grain full metal jacket. 
and I'm sure the CZ is going to handle it just fine. Gun's brand new, first range trip, bringing you guys along. Let's see how this baby functions and see just how accurate it is. From what I remember from my trip to the Czech Republic, this thing was a real tack driver and a real pleasure to shoot. And now we're just going to go confirm that right now. So guys, let's go load up some magazines, head over to the firing line, have a little bit of fun this afternoon. All right, guys, so here we go. First of all, let's take a look at these sights. These are really nice. You have a fiber optic front sight, which gives you a nice bright red dot in daylight conditions. It's not a tritium night sight. And here on the rear, you can see the adjustable rear sight. So you can make click adjustments here for elevation. Then if you wanna make windage adjustments, you loosen these two screws and then you drift adjust that rear sight and tighten those back down. Again, this gun is really designed not for defensive carry, but for competition. This has a 17 round magazine. Uh, you could probably get 18 if you put a extended base plate on it, loading it. It's like a sewing machine, guys. There's no decocker, so it, it's designed to be a single action only handgun. But, um, you know, you can put that hammer down. It does have double action capability, but like I said, it's really designed for single action. Let's see how this baby shoots. Wow, that is so smooth. This handgun's pretty heavy. It's all metal. We'll get some weight on it here for you guys. But uh, there's zero recoil with these nine millimeter loads. Yeah, shoots right where you want it to. This is nice. Too big, too heavy, not the right safety for concealed carry, but I would love to conceal carry this thing. Such a tank. Last shot, I actually shot the hostage taker versus shooting the hostage in the face. Wow. So, first impressions, I'm in love. Oh, what a sweetheart. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the serrations on this thing. Very, very deep serrations. So, for those competition guys that like to manipulate their gun from the front, you can certainly do that. I'm not a real big advocate of that, but teach their own. I'm more of a, a pincher. You'll notice that, look at the, the style of the slide. See how it's kind of comes in? They were telling me that they, um, they took a look at the, the Shadow 2 and they looked at ways they could reduce weight, get reciprocating mass down, and, um, and just make the gun more shootable. And it just shoots really, really flat. What a sweet feeling shooting pistol. Notice how thin those grips are with those aluminum grips. The checkering is real, real coarse, but I won't say that it's uncomfortable to shoot. I'm really got, I have a nice tight grip on it. And that magazine release, yeah, that's really, really easy to hit. Okay, load up some more magazines. It goes by way, way too fast, only having three mags. Should have brought some more out. But look at that barrel, like on a lot of browning actions, you'll notice the barrel tilts down real sharply, like on a SIG. Look how little tilt there is, and look how low that bore axis is in your hand. Now I know a lot of guys are going to say bore axis means nothing to recoil impulse and you know there's there's various debates on that but what I will say is I find guns that have a low bore axis that sit deep in my hand to be more shootable for me and uh, the weight of this gun certainly aids in its shootability you do have an accessory rail down there with one notch on it but um, yeah let's go load up some more mags you know what I'm kind of curious this trigger pull is really really nice I would say it's probably hand tuned hand finished hand polished Let's put it on a trigger pull scale and see what this single action pull is because it's really, really, really nice. I have my handy dandy Lyman digital trigger pull scale here. And uh, 
three pounds, 15 ounces. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this trigger is, is like really, really smooth. This is the nicest trigger I felt on a CZ. It's even nicer than my, uh, and then my pro carry package on my carry gun. Four pounds, eight ounces. Sometimes it's really hard to get it to break and not hit the rear of the frame and actually add a little bit of weight to it. Four pounds, nine ounces, fairly consistent there. Three pounds, 12 ounces. So you're looking at right out of four pound trigger, guys, and that, that's really, really nice. You may think that that sounds a little bit heavy, but it's gonna feel like a very nice, light, crisp trigger pull to you. Anything much lighter than that probably is gonna go off when you don't want it to. So um, yeah, great trigger. Not surprised, it certainly feels like a good trigger. So anytime you have a gray handgun versus a black handgun, you're gonna to start to see little black smudges appear all over it. So the more you shoot it, the dirtier it's gonna get. That's why you're gonna to wanna to come home and clean it. So let's talk about field stripping this bad boy. It is a CZ-75 after all. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out. The magazines do shoot right out of this thing. I'm gonna cock the hammer, pull the slide to the rear, lock it to the rear, and visually inspect that chamber. Make sure the weapon is clear. Okay, now, CZ-75s have these little takedown tick marks right here. You have to line these two lines up and then you can push this pin across and take it apart. Now, the thing is, is many times CZ will do things like put a little recess hole there and pushing on this pin can be a little bit difficult. It's usually pretty tight. The base pad on this magazine is made out of plastic, so it's not gonna mar up the finish of the gun. Here's what I do. Just double check it here, make sure it's clear. I pull it back like this, I hold it with my hand. See how those lines are now lined up right there where my, my index finger is? This gun's hot actually for me shooting it. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold it like this where it's actually at its hottest. Jeez, we've been shooting a lot, guys. All right, and uh, I'm gonna take the rear of my magazine here, the plastic part, and I'm just gonna push on this pin and it'll pop it across, see? And now I can just pull that pin out. And I didn't do anything to mar up the finish on my CZ. Now, with the hammer back, you'll notice that it doesn't want to come apart. So you want to make sure, obviously, that weapon is clear. I'm going to ease this hammer all the way forward, and now I can push the uppers and lowers apart. Now, this thing's a beefy tank on the lower side. All right, so you have that full-length dust cover. There's no lightning cuts, and this thing is heavy. It's all forged. Now, if you take a look at the top of this thing, you'll notice... There's some areas here that don't look like your average CZ-75. Now, all this is riding within the frame. I don't know why this is here. It's probably muzzle weight, perhaps, to control recoil. And you'll notice here, when I was talking about those additional recoil buffers that come with the gun, there's one of them right there. It's a non-captive recoil spring, so I'm going to pull it out. Man, this thing is hot, guys. And see how it comes out? And then that spring is just kind of loose in there. All right. So non-captive, and then of course the barrel just goes forward and comes slightly out. The rest of it's pretty much CZ 75-ish. Have your two locking cuts right here, straight off 1911, very much a browning action still. And uh, you know, your pin goes through here. That's that camming action, that's your delay. And you'll notice my fingers are getting black. I'm gonna wipe it off just a little bit. Now I'm actually running the gun right now with, um, with that grease that I like. It's uh, called Battleborn Grease, and I'm, I'm just kind of running it with that because I'm trying to preserve it as much as I can from wear. I'm not going to shoot this gun a whole bunch. Just kind of wipe it off just a little bit. Put it back together. You just set your barrel in until it drops down. <laughs> My fingers are all black. This is where it's going to be a little bit challenging, so you'll have to watch this little hole right here. 
this guide rod has to protrude through that little hole and you kind of have to move it around until it finally hits. There it goes, I got it that time. And so it'll line up right there so it can move freely. All right, once you have your upper assembly put back together, you'll notice, and this isn't from where, guys, this polish was already there. So it looks like the guys at, at the factory polished these slide rails that, that attributes, or I attribute that to that really nice kind of sewing machine feel it has to it, the really smooth action. All right, so I'm gonna take this upper assembly. It does have full length guide rod, or guide rails. So the rails are run the full length of the pistol, slide it on, pull it back to where your takedown notches are lined up yet again. All right, just like that. Now you're gonna take your pin, Put it in there and just push it straight through. And once it pops, the gun's ready to go. All right. I didn't do a good job cleaning it. I just wanted to wipe it off a little bit and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So, a little bit different than your standard CZ75, but it shoots very much the same. Ergonomics, everything about it is very much a CZ75 right down to the trigger, but it does look like that trigger, even the face of that trigger is polished. It's a very smooth, feel so as your finger comes back it moves smoothly across the face of that trigger no serrations whatsoever let's see how much the shadow 2 weighs Gun is empty. I don't have a magazine in it. This is just the gun itself. And yeah, 2.7 pounds. So that's a chunk of steel, guys. Let me go ahead and see what it weighs with an empty magazine in it. So you can get an overall weight, 2.9 pounds. So yeah, it's a chunk of steel. But I'm telling you what, guys, it really, contributes to how well the gun shoots in terms of recoil impulse and how shootable it is. So, like I said, it's not a carry gun, it's a competition gun, and that weight is an actual benefit. All right, I'm gonna give the uh, Shadow 2 a try here. This is my first time firing the gun, so. I have to say, I really can't help but want to fire this thing really fast. It's, it's super smooth. All right, guys, it's time to tie things up this afternoon and head back and clean my CZ Shadow 2 pistol. I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with us, guys. It was a lot of fun shooting this handgun. If you're a CZ nut like I am, swing by your local gun shop, put one in your hands if they have one on the wall. I think you're going to agree with me. This is an exceptional handgun. Of course, I am biased. I do like CZs. I don't try to hide that fact, but I've never had a problem with them, collected them for decades, and this is the premium CZ. This is so fun to shoot today. So... If you're looking for that top tier CZ handgun, maybe you're a competitor. Now, I'm not a competitor, so I'm not saying this is the ultimate competition handgun. I wouldn't know, but swing by and check it out. You may like it. And if you are a competitor, who knows? Maybe you'll like it in three gun matches or IPSC or IDPA or whatever it is that you shoot. Me, I just like coming out here banging steel with the darn thing. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that. First of all, swing by and consider becoming a Patreon. There's a link down below. YouTube is killing gun channels. They're killing our search results. They, you know, even though you may have seen a, an ad run in front of this video, we're not getting paid anymore. They don't want us here. So a lot of us have moved over to Patreon. So I ask that you guys go by and find your favorite content creators, myself included, any of the other gun tubers, or even if they're not in the firearms industry, a lot of people are being affected by this, especially gun channels, and consider becoming a Patreon and directly supporting the channel. 
If you do that, there's a whole bunch of stuff you get in return in the case of the Military Arms Channel. We do special blowout deals through Copper Custom. We do behind the scenes information. I answer all private messages and emails. Uh, we do ammunition giveaways, thanks to our, our friends over at Freedom Munitions. Every single month, we give away stuff from the ranges, and we're even gonna bring some patrons out here and let them shoot with us and make a video. So please consider supporting us and the other content creators that you regularly consume their content because YouTube is screwing everybody universally. Also, you may notice that we're wearing different t-shirts from time to time. We've partnered up with Forge from Freedom. They manufacture t-shirts and they sell them for us. And now we have a retail store online working with Forge from Freedom. And we have all the favorite t-shirts you may have seen here on the Military Arms channel. If we come up with a great idea or if you've seen it here on the channel, you can find it over there. There is a link below. Also, swing by and check us out over at Copper Custom. It's coppercustom.com. It's our online store. If you'd like to take a look at some products, support the channel, support the folks at Copper, it's a great way to do it. All right, guys, I got 15 rounds, I think, hiding in this last magazine of the Browning Ammo. Of course, we've had no malfunctions with this bad boy this afternoon. And if it wasn't for the fact I was out of ammo, I'd still be out here shooting until the sun went down. I really do enjoy shooting this thing. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. We'll talk to you soon. Yep, that's the only flaw I can find with this handgun is it runs out of ammunition.